this episode will be the second installment of the Detroit series. In the last episode, I took a look inside Detroit's automotive factories and learned about the city's rich history. In this episode, I explore inside one of the most historic schools the city has to offer, Cooley High School. It opened in 1928 and operated for 81 years. Unfortunately, during America's depression, government corruption, and racial conflict in America, Detroit and the schools suffered from low enrollment, forcing it to close in 2010. It features Mediterranean styling and is an architectural Gilded Age gym. It also is the largest abandoned high school in Detroit. So come with me and let's explore and see what's inside. No school in the United States is as bad as crisis as in Detroit. High school dropout rates are more than twice the national average, and teachers are striking over dangerously dilapidated buildings, low pay, and inadequate resources. Detroit has closed more than two-thirds of its facilities since 2000, leaving many of them boarded up, abandoned, and ripe for looting. With more than $3.5 billion in debt and students going for charter schools in the suburbs, The district has no easy fix. So, how did Detroit get to this point? Detroit's population boomed at the turn of the 20th century, and the city pushed its borders further and further out. The population, 285,000 in 1900, hit 1.5 million 30 years later. That expansion saw 180 new schools built to accommodate the growing demand for education. Gilded Age schools like this became the centers of the city's new neighborhoods. Detroit Public Schools saw nearly 300,000 students walk through its doors by 1966. But Detroit couldn't sustain the pace of growth, and nearly as fast as it grew, Detroit collapsed. We hereby officially request the immediate deployment of federal troops into Michigan to assist state and local authorities in re-establishing law and order in the city of Detroit. Detroit saw its families and tax revenue move to the suburbs like many American cities. White flight increased as racial desegregation went into effect. And with the auto plants relocating to the suburbs, families followed the jobs. From 1961 to 1971, more than 50,000 white students left the district. The flight from Detroit robbed schools of badly needed resources and led to six teacher strikes in 25 years and declining enrollment was compound by poor management. Lots of schools needed repair, like Southwestern High School. Their swimming pool was shut down in the 1990s because it couldn't pass a health inspection. The district allocated a massive amount of money to repair the pool, but the construction work was so poor that they ended up closing the pool again after reopening it. Unfortunately, this has gotten worse in recent decades. From 1999 to 2012, more than $100,000 was spent upgrading schools closed within a few years. Of 390 schools in 1975, less than 100 are open today. Closing a school can rapidly accelerate the decline of neighborhoods in a city that's already bottoming out. Property values drop, kids travel longer distances to school, and communities fall into disrepair. Today, less than 50,000 students attend Detroit Public Schools. Some may say Detroit is showing signs of improvement, but that's only in the inner city within a two-mile radius. Outside of that wall, it still looks like a war zone. The northwest side of Detroit isn't the safest neighborhood, so let's drive around the perimeter first to see if there's anything that looks out of place before going inside.
What you are looking at right here is 17 and a half gallons of drinking water, still sealed up from 72 years ago. At school, children were taught to hide underneath their desks in case of a nuclear attack. They even had practice drills. Office buildings and schools were designated as civil defense fallout shelters. Fallout shelters like this had to have food and water supplies to help the survival rate. Thomas M. Cooley High School, opened and built in 1928. The enrollment was over 1,500 students during the opening, but grew over 3,700 four years later. This massive increase wouldn't last long as Detroit started to belly up shortly after. The declining enrollment and racial integration shuttered the school in 2010 with just over 1,000 students. White families fearing integration began to leave for the suburbs in droves leading to a dramatic decrease in students. After this closure, vandals started scrapping the place for copper and destroying anything they could. In 2017, a suspicious fire happened inside this auditorium, and still to this day, nobody knows who did it. And here are some before and after shots. What you are witnessing right here is extremely rare. This is one of the last remaining gun ranges inside a school. Today, this will be unheard of.
please. This is like a secret passage or something. I love it. Oh, this is Though the school was losing students, the district invested money to an increasingly empty building. The auditorium, towers, and roof were all replaced between 2004 and 2006. The school also added a health clinic and the vocational wing was converted into a special needs school, and over $12 million was spent on these improvements. During its closure, Mother Nature began to work its way inside the building as the years went by. Paint began to flake off in massive sheets in the hallways, water began to accumulate onto the new roof, and without routine maintenance, it leaked through many of the rooms inside. Nearing its final days, despite having cameras and boarded windows, scrappers slowly made inroads onto the building's electrical system, and whole parts of the building started to go dark. Police made arrests here, but with 70 other schools abandoned in the area, the same things were happening there. Police couldn't keep up, and things started to fall apart. Ooh. 
Here we go. Come on, baby. I get it. Ah. Uh. This floor is buckling, watch this. Uh. Shaking the whole damn room. I know I don't weigh that much, come on. <laughs> And that's exactly what I'm talking about. This school is open to the elements and nobody guarding it. People are coming in as they please, and for all I know, it could be scrappers. Unsure of who those people were, I decided to make my exit because you never know who you're dealing with. So, where does Cooley High School go from here? Well, it's been a year since I filmed this episode, and I've been keeping up with Detroit's news on the renovation of historic buildings like this one. Talks have been in the works to revitalize the school into something good for the community. But I honestly think the powers that be will let it sit just like it is till the end of time. Stay tuned for the third installment of this Detroit series in the next video. And if you like this type of content, please share and like the video as it tells YouTube's algorithm to advertise it to more viewers. And remember to always make wonderful memories and keep exploring.